6th grade, module 3, lesson 6, classwork. Write the decimal equivalent of each fraction, one half. So what I'm going to do is, this is something we learned um, in 5th grade and 6th grade, this is just a review. So if you remember, what we do, or maybe you already know that one half is equal to 5 tenths, but I'm going to make this have a denominator of 10 or 100 because then it's easy to just flip it into a decimal. So 1 half is equal to 1 times 5 is 5 is 5 tenths. So that's equal to 0 and 5 tenths. 4 fifths, I'm going to make this out of tenths. Times 2 would get us 10, so times 2 would be 8. So that's what equal to 8 tenths or 0 and 8 tenths. And then 6 and 7 tenths, it's already in tenths, so we just have to write it. 6 and 7 tenths. B, write the fraction equivalent of each decimal. So now we're going backwards, the opposite of what we just did. So 42 hundredths. We can write it just how we said it. So 42 hundredths. We just need to go ahead and reduce that. So we can divide both of those by 2. We'll have 21 fiftieths, and then 21 and 50 don't have any common factors, so we can't reduce any more, and we get 21 fiftieths. 3 and 75 hundredths, but I know 75 hundredths, I can divide both of those by 25. And when I do that, the three, 3 stays the same, but 75 divided by 25 is 3, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. So 3 and 3 fourths. And then 36 and 90 hundredths. Oops. 36 and 90 hundredths. So I can just cancel out two zeros there and get 36 and 9 tenths. Example 1, graphing rational numbers. If b is a non-zero whole number, then the unit fraction 1 over b is located on the number line by dividing the segment between 0 and 1 into b segments of equal length. If one of the b segments has 0 on its left endpoint, and the right endpoint of this segment corresponds to the unit fraction of 1 over b. So that's, that, was a lot of, that was a lot of words. Probably hard to understand. Basically what that just says is that if b is a non-zero whole number, so this is just any number besides zero, so any fraction. It could be like 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 fifteenth, anything. Then we can plot it on this number line. So this is just talking about how we plot numbers. And then the next section is just more of that that might also confuse you. So let's just skip to the example. So locate the graph locate and graph the number 3 tenths and its opposite on a number line. So now, instead of separating our graph into whole numbers, like we were doing before, we're just going to separate it and be working with fractions. So we're just taking it one step further. So between 0 and negative 1, or let's start with positives, 0 and 1, we want to graph 3 tenths. So I'm going to section this off into tenths. So there's tenths, and then let's do tenths for the negative side too. So it wants us to locate and graph three tenths. So three tenths would be one, two, three. There's three tenths. And we also want to graph its opposite. So the opposite of three tenths is negative three tenths. So that would be, we'd go to zero and then go three tenths the opposite direction. So there's negative three tenths. Exercise one. Use what you know about the point negative seven fourths and its opposite to graph both points on the number line below. The fraction negative seven fourths is located between which two consecutive integers? Explain your reasoning. Okay. So we want to know, use what we know about negative 7 fourths and its opposite. So negative 7 fourths, the opposite would be 7 fourths. And we're going to graph both on the number line. So let's find the middle and plot 0. 
And then since we're counting in fourths, or our denominator is in fourths, I'm just going to label it in fourths. So we'd have one fourth. And then you can write four fourths, or four fourths is the same as one. And then eight fourths is two. So let's do the negatives. Negative four fourths or one. And then negative eight fourths is the same as two. So really, if we had whole numbers, you can see on our number line we have zero, one, two, and negative one and negative two. And then we just broke it up into smaller fraction pieces in between. So let's plot negative seven fourths. So there's negative seven fourths and its opposite, seven fourths. And then we want to know negative seven fourths. So this one right here, negative seven fourths, is located between which two consecutive integers? So remember, integers are positive or negative whole numbers, so they can't have a fraction or a decimal follow them. So it's any whole number. So we're looking for the whole numbers that it's in between. Consecutive meaning must be like one and two, or five and six. It can't be between six and eight. It would have to be between six and seven. So it's between negative two and negative one. Oh, I skipped the first one. So the fraction is located between negative one and negative two. And then on the number line, each segment will have an equal length of, so that's just saying we sectioned this off into lengths of one-fourth. So each piece here is one-fourth. So our explanation, let's start by saying seven-fourths is the opposite. of negative seven-fourths because it is the same distance in the opposite direction from zero. The original fraction is located between negative four fourths, which was one, and negative eight fourths, which is two. So that's how we came up with our consecutive positive integers, or consecutive integers. Example two, rational numbers in the real world. The water level of a lake rose one in 2,500 feet after it rained. Answer the following questions using the number line below. Write a rational number to represent the situation. So a rational number, our rational number would be one and 2,500. Or you, if you wanted to write it as a fraction, you could write one and one fourth. What two integers is one and 25 hundredths between on a number line? So one and 25 hundredths, we can look at it, we can even plot it on here. So here is zero over here on our number line. Here's one, it looks like we're counting by fourths. Fourths. So one and one fourth would be located right here, and that's located between one and two. Write the length of each segment on the number line as a decimal and as a fraction. So we've already figured out the lengths here. We've labeled them as one fourth, and that's equal to. 25 hundredths. 
and D, what will the water level what will be the water level after it rained? Graph the point on the number line. So after it rains, so it was at the water level was at zero, then we get some rain, and it comes up to one and one fourth. So we've already plotted that right here. So the water level after it rains will be one and one and twenty five hundredths or one and one fourth. Um, feet. E. After two weeks have passed, the water level of the lake is now the opposite of the water level when it rained. What will be the new water level? Grab this point on the number line. Explain how you determined your answer. So if it was, it's the opposite of one and one fourth, so we can find the opposite of one and one fourth would be equal to negative one and one fourth. So can, we can plot negative one and one fourth right there. And then your explanation could be um, that equation right there. F, state a rational number that is not an integer whose value is less than one in 25 hundredths and describe its location between two consecutive integers on the number line. So we're just picking any rational number that's value is less than one in 25 hundredths and describe its location between two integers. Okay, so let's pick something on the number line. I'm gonna choose, let's see, let's choose one fourth. I'm going to choose one fourth or twenty five hundredths. So one fourth and twenty or twenty five hundredths would be between. You can see, or it's getting a little crowded. So our yellow line is one fourth, and it's between zero and one. 